This instructional video will walk you through the daily operation and care of your IntelliBot floor care equipment and includes the following. An overview of the robot's operation and control panel. Completing daily cleaning routines. Determining and selecting cleaning modes and routine maintenance procedures. Our robotic floor cleaners can be used in four different cleaning modes. Manual, Area, Root, and Spot. Setup for all four are very similar and quick and easy. First, let's look at the Operator Control Panel. The Control Panel has four important items. The Power On button. Press this to energize the equipment. The Login Screen. To log in, enter your numeric password followed by pressing the green check mark. The handlebar pressure strip senses the operator's touch and will stop the machine if the operator removes his hands. The emergency stop switch. Hitting the emergency stop button stops the forward motion of the machine. To restart the machine, twist the stop button and lift up. To get the robot prepared for daily operation, unplug the battery charging plug from rear of robot. Remove the blue canisters from under the control panel by turning them counterclockwise using the canister wrench. Remove filters from inside the blue canisters. Inspect filters and replace as necessary. Important: Ensure O-rings remain seated on the interior lip of blue canisters. Release the latch and lift tank lid to access the wire catch basket. Make sure the wire catch basket is clean prior to latching the tank lid closed. Power on robot by pressing the power on button. Fill tank to fill line with clean water, adding no more than 3 to 6 ounces of cleaning solution. For example, neutral cleaner, 3 to 1 cleaner, vinegar, etc. Warning, do not use cleaning solutions that foam. Press the water faucet icon a number of times to achieve the desired water volume. It is recommended to use the factory defaults, which is a single green bar for Hydrobot and two green bars for Duobot. Note, porous floors may require a higher water volume setting. IntelliBot robots automatically prime the water pumps. The indicator bars will change to yellow when priming to the selected water volume. Once the system is primed, the indicator bars will change to green. Ensure the area to be cleaned is as clutter-free as possible by removing all items from the area such as garbage bags, trash cans, and cleaning carts. Keeping the area to be cleaned clear ensures a more efficient job of cleaning. Dry or dust mop the area prior to cleaning. This will prevent lint, dust balls, strings, or other objects from getting caught under the squeegee blades, which can cause water streaking on the floor. The Duobot sweeps as it scrubs, so dust mopping is not necessary. Determine which operation mode best fits the area to be cleaned. For quick spill cleanups, or if the area requires minimal cleaning, use manual cleaning mode. For larger, rectangular, unmapped areas, use Area Cleaning Mode. For areas of 20 square feet or less, use Spot Cleaning Mode. And for mapped or acquired areas, use Root Cleaning Mode. For minimal cleaning or picking up casual water in small areas, Manual Cleaning Mode is the perfect application. To operate the robot in manual cleaning mode, perform the following actions. After preparing the robot for service, move the robot into position. To begin manual cleaning, press the manual mode icon on the home screen. Press the forward or the reverse arrow icon until the speed bar indicator is at the desired speed and direction. Make sure the brushes and vacuum are on. To turn the vacuum motor on or off, Press the fan icon. To turn the brushes on or off, press the brush icon. Then, squeeze the handlebar and maneuver the robot over the surface to be cleaned. The robot must be activated within 15 seconds. By gripping the handlebar or the forward command, will time out. To stop the robot, 
let go of the handlebar. To have the robot turn 180 degrees, press the U-turn icon, grip the handlebar, and walk around with the robot as it turns. If you have any questions during this activity, press the I icon and instructions will guide you through the process. To exit the manual mode, press the Home icon. In area cleaning mode, the robot cleans the full length of an area 5.5 feet wide to 16 feet wide or 64 feet wide if long-range sonar are installed. Area cleaning mode requires side walls as well as an end wall. There is no limit to the length of run on area clean. If a shorter run is desired, you can place a wet floor sign in front of the robot to simulate an end wall. Set the robot in the middle of the side walls. Select Automatic Clean icon, then select Area Clean from the list. Press Robot Forward Root icon, green arrow, and the cleaning routine starts with robot performing an Auto Learn function. During Auto Learn, the robot navigates down the center of the hallway, automatically determining the width and length before reaching an end wall, then begins cleaning in a self-programmed grid method. As soon as the robot is activated, you can leave it, and it will do the rest. If you have any questions during this activity, press the I icon and instructions will guide you through the process. To exit the Area mode, press the Home icon. In Spot Cleaning mode, the robot cleans a 20-foot length of an area 5.5 feet wide to 16 feet wide autonomously. Spot Cleaning mode requires sidewalls, however, it does not require an end wall. Set the robot in the middle of the sidewalls. Select Automatic Clean icon, then select Spot Clean from the list, and press Robot Forward Root icon, green arrow. The cleaning routine starts with robot performing an Auto Learn function. During Auto Learn, the robot navigates down the center of the hallway, automatically determining the width and length before reaching an end wall, or about 20 feet, whichever comes first then begins cleaning in a self-programmed grid method. As soon as the robot is activated, you can leave it, and it will do the rest. If you have any questions during this activity, press the I icon and instructions will guide you through the process. To exit spot mode, press the Home icon. In root cleaning mode, the robot accesses a stored cleaning navigation routine known as a root. Each route has a unique starting location. The robot knows where it is at all times and once activated will go to the chosen route starting point and begin the cleaning cycle. To operate the robot in route cleaning mode, select Automatic Clean icon, then select Route Clean from the list. Select the route you want to clean and press Forward icon. From the list, select the desired route followed by the green arrow. The cleaning routine begins and the robot navigates on its own. You can leave it to clean the pre-programmed area. Should any problems arise or at the end of the cleaning cycle, the machine will shut itself down and page you for attention. If you have any questions during this activity, press the I icon and instructions will guide you through the process. To exit the mode, press the Home icon. In the event of an emergency, for instance, building evacuation, etc., it may become necessary to pause or stop the robot during an autonomous cleaning routine. To pause a route, press the pause icon. To resume the route, on the following screen, press the green arrow. In an emergency, to press the stop button on the top of the robot. To resume cleaning, twist the button and lift. The tank should be drained, rinsed, and cleaned at the end of every shift. Maneuver the robot to a location where fluids can be drained. Locate the drain hose and position the end to where fluids can be dumped. Pull the drain valve. The dirty water should now dispense into the drain or catch basin. Open tank lid. Rinse out tank. When tank is flushed and empty, Push the drain valve in and stow the drain hose. Using the canister wrench, 
Remove the blue canisters by turning counterclockwise. Remove filters. If using cotton wound filters, rinse and allow to dry before next use. If using pleated filters, allow to dry completely. Brush filters with brush prior to using. Inspect filters and replace as necessary. Important. Ensure O-rings remain seated on the interior lip of blue canisters. Remove wire basket and clean. Clean tank lid, removing any debris. The filters and bag should be cleaned, checked and replaced if necessary after every shift. Open tank lid. Remove the vacuum bag by using both hands to pull straight back to remove the bag from the collar. Check the bag for holes and set aside if it has not reached capacity. Locate the two air filter holders. Twist the cover off in a counterclockwise quarter turn. Unsnap the filter retainer from the head, remove the filter medium, and wash with mild soap and water. Allow to dry before reinstalling. Reinstall vacuum bag or install a new one. Clean tank lid, removing any debris. Exchanging battery packs. Set the parking brake. Warning. The battery pack contains four batteries, all of which have an active charge that can cause personal injury. Use caution when handling. Position battery exchange cart to receive battery pack. Latch the guide ramp into slots located above rear bumper. Lock the casters on the battery exchange cart. Warning, a battery pack weighs 260 pounds. Be sure that the exchange cart casters are in a locked position to prevent personal injury. Press latch to release battery pack. Using the handle, pull the battery pack onto the cart. Release the battery exchange cart from the robot and switch it end for end to install the fresh battery. Reverse the steps to install a new battery pack. Important. The robot is to be placed on a continuous charge for a minimum of 8 hours. Only 24 volt chargers with a gel cell setting are to be used. These chargers ensure that the batteries do not overheat. Using any other charger will damage the robot's batteries. Maneuver the robot to its charging location. Set the parking brake. Power down the robot by pressing the on-off push button. Warning, wait for the robot to power down completely before plugging in the charger. Important, the robot is to be placed on a continuous charge for a minimum of eight hours. Only 24 volt chargers with a gel cell setting are to be used. These chargers ensure that the batteries do not overheat. Using any other charger will damage the robot's batteries. Changing pads or brushes. This section describes the procedure for changing pads or brushes on the Hydrobot floor scrubber. Depending on the floor surface, the robot can accommodate various grades of pad or brush abrasiveness. Power down the robot by pressing the on off push button. Unlatch front cover and pivot open. Remove pad driver, or brush, by applying a quick turn towards the center of the machine. Slide pad driver, or brush, out from under brush head. Remove pads by squeezing lock hub on each pad driver. Reinstall each pad by centering it on the pad driver. Lock hub in the center of each pad by pressing and snapping it into place. Reinstall pad driver, or brush, by aligning the three pad driver alignment studs into the drive hub alignment slots. Lock the pad driver into the retaining clips by applying a quick turn away from the center of the machine. Locate and loosen or remove the two black knobs securing the squeegee bar. If the squeegee bar is not up, Raise the squeegee bar by pressing the vacuum icon in the home menu. Remove the squeegee assembly 
by sliding to the right or left to clear the back of the robot. To reinstall, simply reverse the procedure. That completes the operational procedures for the IntelliBot robotic floor cleaning systems. If you encounter any problems not covered in this video, please refer to the owner's manual or call 1-888-837-0002. Or visit our website at www.intellibotrobotics.com.